Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at antipro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you an awesome vCloud director environment provided by Stratogen and uh, it's real easy to deploy a new virtual machine based on the vCloud director hosted at Stratogen. So if you want to hire a virtual machine just hop over to stratogen.com and sign up for the free trial because they are offering a free 7 day trial which enables you to host your virtual machine on HP Blades computing power on Sun Storage from NetApp and the networking is uh, also provided. Uh, the software they are using is VMware and the VMware vCloud Director 1.5. So um, it's real easy to create a virtual machine once you ha have received your username and password from uh, Stratogen and uh, the username and password can be used to log on to your own URL and you will see if your own URL from Stratogen once you have signed up for an account and this URL uh, will bring you to the vCloud Director user interface, the Stratogen vCloud platform. So if you put in your username and password, you will get access to the Stratogen environment. And I already created one virtual machine running uh, Windows 2008, but uh, just to give it a test, just to try it out. But it's real easy to uh, to install your uh, or create your own virtual machines uh, within the vCloud environment uh, from Stratogen. So just click on the plus sign and the plus sign will automatically show you a catalog and you can create your own catalog based on your own OVF files and your own ISOs. But you can also choose a vApp uh, that's already created and Stratogen has created a public catalog and this public catalog uh, will show you ready to run virtual machines based on both CentOS and both Windows 2008. So in this case we are going to build a new vApp based on CentOS 5.5 .5, and CentOS 5.5 .5 will enable us to uh, to roll out the vApp with one single virtual machine in it and simply click the virtual machine in, in the catalog and uh, once you have selected uh, your virtual machine, then click next. And after clicking next, you have to put in uh, a name and a description. So in this case, we will put in something like CentOS demo virtual machine. And the description will show where the virtual machine will be used for. So th this is a demo virtual machine. Uh, is the description. You can also provide a lease time and the lease time will uh, enable you to expire, automatically expire the virtual machine after a given time. In this case we will leave it uh, constantly available. And this is the part where you can select, uh, select a network. So um, we are going to configure this, vir this virtual machine, this vApp, uh, with a network based on a direct connection to the internet. So you can put in a host name, you can put in a virtual machine name, and you can select which network is used by the virtual machine to get to the outside world. So we're using a static IP address, but you can also use a pool or a DHCP. Uh, you can even create a fenced network and you can fence your, network, uh, your virtual machines through vShield, which is also part of the vCloud Director 1.5. And vShield will enable you to, uh, to fence your virtual machine. So this is the part where you can configure advanced networking, like fencing virtual machines or uh, uh, creating firewall rules and that sort of things. So this is uh, the overall overview of the virtual machine. You have to check if everything is correct and once everything is correct you can click finish. And in a matter of seconds the virtual machine is created and the virtual machine can be powered on by uh, selecting the power on button, the green power on button. So uh, it's, it goes real quick. It's, it's only a few seconds and then the virtual machine is is uh, available so in this case the virtual machine is already available and uh, if you are using the buttons and i'm using the green button to power on this virtual machine then it's powering on you can also uh, get access to the console of this virtual machine by clicking on the thumbnail of the screen of the virtual machine uh, but you have to install some additional software 
And in this case, it's the VMware Remote Console plugin. I already downloaded this plugin on my computer, but I didn't install it yet. So we have to give it a few minutes to uh, to install on this uh, in this environment. This is the same ActiveX object, the same console that's also used by the vSphere client, that's also used by the new web access uh, uh, web server. And uh, it gives you access through VNC. VNC is running uh, in the background of this uh, piece of software. And you can take over the console of your virtual machine and install software in it or whatever you want to do at the console of your virtual machine. Before you are installing this plugin, you have to, uh, you have to close the uh, Firefox or the Internet Explorer. Otherwise, you are not... Uh, able to uh, install the plugin into this virtual machine. So this looks really cool. Uh, installing a plugin and after the installation you are able to get access to the console of this uh, virtual machine. It goes really quick, but when you're waiting for it, it takes a bit of time. So the steps you have to take to create a virtual machine within the Strato vCloud environment. Uh, the first step is uh, uh, take one virtual machine from the catalog, one vApp, then put in a new name for the, for the vApp, uh, then check the options for the virtual machine within the vApp, and in this case there was only one virtual machine within the vApp, and then configure networking for that one virtual machine, click next, and then finish, and then in a matter of seconds, uh, your uh, VApp is up and running and your virtual machine is accessible through the remote console. So the remote console is installed, and we are going to fire off the, uh, the client for the vCloud director, the web client again, and uh, we are going to the homepage of my uh, environment right here. I have to put in a username and a password. Uh, and in my case, uh, my username is Eric Sloof because Stratogen provided a real cool demo uh, 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 environment, a demo account for me. So once you put in your username and password, you can click on OK and you will have access to the vCloud Director screen again. And in this case, the virtual machine was already up and running. So when I click the thumbnail of this virtual machine, it will automatically try to open the VMware Remote Console. And after enabling Firefox for this website, after enabling this website in Firefox for opening an alternate screen, uh, you will see uh, the real console of the CentOS virtual machine. Creating the machine, creating the, the VApp goes faster than opening the screen. <laughs> and eventually we will have access to the console of the CentOS virtual machine. So what I see a lot is that people are struggling with logging in into a newly deployed virtual machine and you have to check out the properties of your VApp and your virtual machine. So in the first place you can go to your VApp and when you are going to the properties of your VApp you will see the name, you will see uh, some configuration things uh, at these screens. But the real important part is the deployed virtual machine because when a virtual machine is deployed from a catalog and you can click to on my cloud and then select the vapps and within the vapps you can see which virtual machines are running uh, in a vapp when a virtual machine is deployed from a catalog there's a special customization wizard and the customization wizard will provide your virtual machine with a new password so in this case, when I'm going to the properties of the individual virtual machine in the VApp, we can see uh, a general, uh, the virtual machine name. We can see uh, all things like hardware and network cards used and that sort of things. But the important part is at the guest OS customization tab, because there is the password you can use to log on to the console. This part password is generated during uh, during the deployment of this virtual machine. I mean, you can just type it over and then uh, change it into one of your own passwords and then uh, log on to the console. So it's really hard for me talking and typing at the same time. So I think I'm going to fail on this one, but doesn't really matter. So, mm, okay, I have there's something wrong with my keyboard or or something. 
no problem at all you see what I mean so um, no this is not gonna work okay so let's do a quick review of the things we've learned in this video if you want to deploy a virtual machine within the vCloud environment provided by Stratogen, then it's real easy. Go to your homepage and uh, simply selecting uh, the plus sign. Uh, you can also go to my cloud and see some configuration details like uh, which virtual machines and VApps are running. Um, the real cool part is uh, the uh, that you are able to to administrator multiple environments so in this case I'm only uh, administrator administrating my own environment but you can uh, see multiple environments right here and you can also see the the number of resources that are used and that are available and you can also create networking different types of networks right here and I only have one direct connection to the internet but it's also possible to create net and DHCP and fence networks and even put in firewall rules uh, uh, created within vShield so um, like I said it's really easy to create a, a, a new VM within this environment just simply click on the, the plus uh, sign and uh, the virtual machine is created before you before you know I think they're using Vi uh, on the back end, so that's the reason why the virtual machine is created in such a short time. So select the virtual machine, or select the, the, the catalog you want to use, and in this case Stratogen created some real cool ready to run virtual machines for us. Select the catalog, select the type of the virtual machine, put in a name, select the correct network co uh, connected to the internet directly and click on uh, next and give it a good static IP address maybe you want to do some advanced networking and then it's just clicking finish and before you know it the virtual machine is up and running it's already creating a new virtual machine right now and after the virtual machine is created just simply click on the play button and power on your newly created virtual machine after creating the virtual machine you're able to access it through the remote console you have to install it separately and the remote console will enable you to uh, have access to the virtual machine. Eric Silverstein.